welcome viewers to another episode in a series of episodes that are focused on extensive revision of the August 2023 Mathematics Paper 1. So if you haven't seen other episodes, please go to our YouTube channel and check for playlists that contains these extensive revision of each and every question from this paper. So questions are grouped in according to the paper and the topics. This it's important for you, especially if you are struggling with a specific topic. You go to a specific topic, you find a series of questions from different papers as far as 2017. Let us look at question 20. Question A of 20. The diagram shows a right angled triangle ABC. BC is produced to D. AC equals 13 cm and cos angle BAC equals 12 over 13. Find the value of tang or tangent ACD. That's the angle. So we are given some few information, but the question is asking us to find the value of the tangent ratio of angle ACD. So this angle. That's what the question is asking. So the question might ask us to find the sine ratio of that angle or the cosine ratio of that angle. So the first thing that we need to remember is the famous Sokatoa, which is sine equals opposite over hypotenuse, while cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Then we have tangent equals opposite over adjacent. That's in the Sokatoa. So now we've been given angle BAC. So BAC is this angle. So this angle is given by this trigonometry cosine ratio. So if that's the case, we know that cos theta is given by we have adjacent over hypotenuse. So hypotenuse is given to us. So if this cos, this angle equals to that, what it means is the adjacent where this angle sits is see this one. So this one must be 12. So that this becomes 12 over 13. Because 13 is hypotenuse. So meaning this side is 12 centimeter. Then if that's 12 centimeter, then you can find the other side using Pythagoras theorem. So we know that this is the hypotenuse which is B, small b, then this is small a, then this is small c. So the hypotenuse which is B square is equal to the square of the other short sides. So we know what B is. So B is equal to 13 square. What is A is what we are looking for. So it's A square. Then what is C? C is 12. 12 square. So 13 times 13 is 169 is equal to a square plus 12 times 12 is 144. So this tells me that 169 minus 144 must equal to a square. So you notice that this one 144, the moment it crosses the cosine, it tends to a negative end. We are subtracting. So the difference here is nothing but 25 is equals to a square. Then we find the square root, the square root. Now because the distance is always positive, so we're going to just look for one square root. So the number that we can multiply itself twice to get 25 is a 5 is equal to m. So this is 5. So we know all the three sides. So we know the three sides, then everything becomes simple. So for us to find the tangent of this, we need to know the tangent of this one. Because angle ACD is an exterior angle of an interior angle, angle ACB, this angle. So let us say we are given the interior angle to be given, let us say A. So I'm just giving you the general principle. So the interior angle is A. So this angle is the interior angle. So if this angle is known to be an interior angle, 
then the corresponding exterior angle of a tangent ratio would be 180 minus a because we know this angle so to find this angle we are going to subtract 118 we take out the angle that we know because this is a straight line that's what it is because remember this straight line is add up to 180 so just for emphasis if this angle is 50 to find this angle it will be 180 minus 50 which will be 130 so just an emphasis so the tangent now of an exterior angle is given by the negative tangent this will be this angle here. it will be negative tangent a if this is a meaning we are looking for this angle that's what it means why is this the case this is because in the second quadrant which is from 90 to 180 the tangent fun function is negative remember the famous all oh, student take chemistry so in the first quadrant in the first quadrant all the angles are positive or all the tangent ratio i mean are positive so all the whether it's sine cosine or tangent they are positive in the second quadrant only the sign is positive here then third tangent then fourth cosine so you notice that in the second quadrant because this is 180 so one should be in the second quadrant so in the second quadrant tangent and cosine are negative only sign is positive so if you are asked to find the tangent of this angle given this angle you will just express this one in terms of that so in this case now since we know what this angle we are looking for so to find this angle we need to use the tangent so this is the adjacent of this angle then this is the opposite so in that case the angle we are looking for now is tan tangent which is angle a c b which is equal to what's the opposite remember it's the opposite over adjacent the opposite is 12 then adjacent is 5 so we get that so to find now angle a c b so angle a c b in terms of the tangent so tangent a c d is just equal to negative tangent a c b you see the difference so take note of that let me just lab it so that you see clearly so this angle if we know it is the, this angle to find this angle we just negate the first one which is the angle tangent ratio of this one so because we found this to be so tangent tangent angle a c d equals negative 12 over 5 that's the answer so the same principle applies when you're dealing with him cosine except for sine so sine in the second quadrant is also positive so for the sine we have to find the angle given that we're given this sine ratio which would be in this case sine of this angle will be sine angle a c b will be equal to opposite over hypotenuse which is 12 over 13 so to find sine this one you just use the same positive because in the second quadrant sine is always positive so that's the principle that i wanted you to take note so hopefully it's clear and you've taken note of my explanation so the answer here is tangent a c d equals negative 12 over 5 so hopefully this is clear so only the for sine that the ratio does not change it maintains the same but for cosine and tangent they take the negative to find the exterior angle so take note of my explanation only sine ratio does not change the tangent ratio and cosine ratio takes the opposite sine to find the exterior angle and this is an exterior angle 
So take note of this because this question almost comes every year. They will ask you either the cosine or sine or tangent. Question B, find the equation of a straight line passing through the point negative 2,3 and is parallel to the straight line whose equation is in this. So when two lines are parallel, they have the same gradient. So these are the parallel lines. So the slopeness of these two lines are the same. So now we've been given the equation to be 2y minus 3x is equal to 5. So the first thing is that we need to find the gradient of this line by making y the subject of the formula. That's the first step. So we're going to have 2y minus 3x equals 5. So we need to solve for y. So if 2y is equal to the moment this one crosses the equal sign, it becomes a positive, so we're going to have 3x plus 5. Then we divide by 2, we divide by 2, 2, so y is equal to 3 over 2x plus 5 over 2. Now the general equation is y is equal to m times x plus c, where m is a gradient, c is the intercept. So in this case, m, which is the gradient, is equal to 3 over 2, and this is positive. So meaning the second line, we also have 3 over 2 as in the gradient. So now if the second line, we know the gradient, then we know the point where it's passing. It's negative 2,3, so it's just a matter of now, say if this is negative 2,3, then you can find the equation of this line because we know the slope. This slope is 3 over 2. So we're going to use this general equation. So now what we have is, what is y at this point y is passing is 3. So it will be 3. So we are substituting into this, whatever is y, you put a 3 equals, what is m? m is 3 over 2, we've already found it. Then times x, what is x? x here is negative 2. Then plus c. Because c is what we don't know. So we need to find the value of c. Once we know the value of c, then we have a complete equation because we already know m. So we have now 3 equals this one times that, it will be negative 3 plus c. Then 3 plus, because the one this one closes the equal sign becomes a positive, 3 equals c. So 3 plus 3 is 6. So c is equal to 6. So ends. I can now substitute into this one because we already know m, so I'll use this space. So y is equal to what is m? 3 over 2. Then times the x plus c, what is c? Is 6. So this is the equation of the line that will pass through this point and this is parallel to this equation. So what is key is making y the subject of the formula. Once you do that, you are good to go. So this is how you answer this question to get the full four marks. So my emphasis is, my goal is not to give you just answers, but explain to you the intuition. So it might take longer than usual, but if you understand the principle, you should be able to take less than half the time I'm taking. So thank you for joining me in this episode. Please join me in another episode as we look at question 21.